This is history on scorching, screeching wheels, a British triumph. The first ever racing turbine has whispered its way through that compelling testbed, the day and night Le Mans race, stealing the headlines from the fast Ferraris that for years have swamped this event. Once a year, a little town is invaded by a quarter of a million people bent on two things, fun and a 40-year tradition of motor racing rolled into one incredible weekend. Two hundred miles an hour they do on the two-mile straight, so bail yourself in. And zero hour for the great race of attrition is bringing spectators in by every means that exists. Le Mans today is something you've never experienced before. Alfa Romeo's destined for disappointment, and now the gas turbine car just 24 hours away from fame. The tension's building. The jet car second driver, Richie Ginter, attempts the impossible to relax before the race of races, while Graham Hill, his partner, simply polishes the tense moments away. Now there's a hush which masks the whole character of a Le Mans weekend, as the mechanics and officials check and seal. Excitement's at its peak. In two seconds now, the race will be on from its running start. Twenty-two, that's Park's Ferrari, which this time tomorrow is to finish third. But don't imagine 24 hours at Le Mans is devoted, even principally, to motor racing by the hundreds of thousands who come here for this great jamboree. A famous face, no longer racing. Sterling Moss looks to the future, not to the past, to kids racing in grim earnest in a knockout junior event alongside the great track. something to eat at least, even if you're one of the few absolute enthusiasts bent on following the race through without distraction. And in the race itself, there are things you can only see with the help of the lap charts and, of course, hand periscopes. Four hours at Le Mans. It's a social experience you share with everyone. French, English, Italian and Yank. With everyone who has a zest for life combined with a sideshow interest in history being made. Because among them, our jet car, quietly lapping Le Mans, is breaking new motoring ground. Here she is, in for a routine pit check. And not once in the 24 hours does she need so much as a simple tyre switch. He's a little bloke, Richie Ginter, so he takes his own seat with him when it's his turn to take over and edge out into the eight-mile course. way so suddenly tonight. With dusk, when the worst of the hazards face the racing drivers, the crowds here give a glance at cars streaking two miles a minute to that tricky Tert Rouge corner before they make for the fun fair, which is as much a part of Le Mans as the inescapable cars themselves.
and on through the night. This is the trickiest time for the drivers when all the quarter million paying audience couldn't care less. When even the big core of journalists have left just one of their team to keep a sleepy vigil on the race. Dawn through the S-Bends. Dawn when the surviving drivers still have to keep their lap average up or better it. And their fans are just beginning to stir themselves for the all-important day to be. Bonjour, mademoiselle. Bonjour, messieurs. No doubt about it, this is France, the only place where Le Mans could ever take place. So join them in the mass, in the open air, as a start to the racing day. Don't let them tell you the French just have coffee and a roll for breakfast. Chicken and wine, and it's 8 o'clock on a Sunday morning. Sunday morning, as it should be, at Le Mans. The English abroad, the Bowler Hat Brigade, are keeping the flag flying. And one driver who's hit the sandbanks is digging himself out to go on to finish 12th. Five minutes to go now, and by weight of numbers, the Ferraris are in the lead as they have been for years. But what about the Rover, BRM? Astoundingly, it's there as well. This is the end, the end of doubts and dreams and great endeavors. The British turbine, the prototype car of tomorrow, has finished as fast as the champions of yesterday. Le Mans is over. Forget the newspaper headlines, our car has now become history.